tying up lot can be easy or maybe a tedious task sometimes especially when you have so many real estate companies agents landowners and even sometimes so-called landlords all calling to buy their properties getting the land is the easiest part but owning the land with genuine documentation is a problem we have seen unprecedented court cases of people going to court to settle land issues if you're looking to buy a plot or a build home with no risk of stress guys look for the right real estate company at ej investments we don't just sell plots we build communities where any plot you buy from us comes with access to water electricity internal roads and other social amenities we guarantee you genuine contract documentations the moment you pay a deposit and a complete handover of your title deeds as soon as completing payment. We currently operate three projects in strategic locations, selling service plots and built homes in our estate to Jering Seafront, Sanying Seaview Estate and our Gunju Seafront Coastal Highway Estate. Our plots are affordable from only $90,000. You can own a home at our Gunju Seafront Coastal Highway Estate. And from $200,000, you can own a home of your dream at our Sanying Seaview and Lake View Estate. Our two Jering Seafront Estate starts from $300,000. Plot sizes ranges from 20 by 20, 20 by 25, and 25 by 25. And we offer an option of 30% deposit and two year payment plans on our, our estates. A beautiful home with peaceful and happy neighborhood awaits you at our project to join Seafront Estate, Signing Seaview and Lakeview Estate and Gunju Stifo Coastal Highway Estate. Call our office on 4464838 or 3021056, which is also on WhatsApp. Email us or visit our website on ejinvestments.net to learn more about our projects. EJ Investments, very fast in property. Saturday and this is the brunch with me Joy Wama on Kirfaka and of course I'm not alone in the studio on my immediate right I have Mustafa K. Dago and of course our very own sister Nimasata um, Kamara you're highly welcome Thank you. so today we'll go straight Mustafa will be taking us through all what have been trending on the Kirfaka website Mustafa Thank you very much. Um, it's been an eventful week and uh, I think for both the newspapers and online uh, both mainstream and online newspapers. Um, this is the work where we had uh, a lot of issues uh, coming out of State House. Uh, 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 we know that um, the uh, most major issues like uh, the burial and the handing over of the remains and the subsequent burial of the December 30th, quote-unquote heroes. Uh, some would disagree, but this is not, in my opinion, a time to debate, but maybe later on we will talk about that. Yeah. Um, also, the, uh, this is the event where the presidency issued a statement to say they discontinue in the Farabar trial, mm -hmm. and apparently that turns out to be... Uh, it turns out to cause a lot of controversy because a lot of people think the president doesn't have the power. The president is overstepping his, his mandate, his boundaries. Um, uh, the justice minister then came out with a statement which most people consider to be window dressing, mm -hmm. you know, sort of, so to speak, uh, and to say that, uh, but we will discuss what the minister said mm -hmm. in response. But let's not also forget, this is the week where the most important day of our transition happened. The TRRC, Truth Reconciliation and Reparation Commission. Mm -hmm. um, most people believe this to be the most important event, event mm -hmm. of the transition of the Gambia mm -hmm. from dictatorship to democracy because this is what is going to establish the historical uh, course. Mm -hmm. you know, both human rights abuses, abuse of institutions and things like that. Even how we got to the coup. Mm -hmm. So so all in all, this is a very, very eventful week. And, uh, you know, very, we can talk, go into detail on people who have uh, appeared before the court, uh, the commission, uh, uh, three so far, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Ibrahim Achongan, uh, a former um, senior officer of the General Mary, um, who had got both military training and police trainings, um, Mr. Serif Gomez, um, a former senior officer of the Gambian Army, mm -hmm. 
and so also Mr. Uh, yeah, and Suare, Captain Suare, mm -hmm. also who actually claimed to have led the coup mm -hmm. at some point. So, I mean, these were the three people who so far appeared before the commission because the commission is at the stage of the fourth stage, which is to establish how the coup happened, mm -hmm. what triggered the coup, what aided, who aided and abetted the coup, what sort of institutional failures led to the coup, and, you know, and, uh, and how it happened eventually. And, uh, and, you know, it's so revealing. I'm so, all of you are following the commission. So, I mean, this is, this is, this is an interesting thing that happens, but also, um, uh, it turns out Gatch, uh, hmm. security and, uh, you know, company, uh, th this is a company that also is mining in the country and also a company that owns a tom tomato, tomato paste, paste. Uh, factory, yeah. uh, apparently imported some couple of guns. Are they 1, the security already? Sir? They are, I, I've been told. They've imported some, a uh, couple of, they actually issued a press release mm -hmm. this morning. Mm -hmm. Um, they apparently imported some 1,200 something, 26 or there about guns into the country and, you know, and police said this reportedly entails, I think, 36, 38, 38 or 36, 38, 38 guns that, they were not authorized. that were not authorized. Yeah. In other words, this could be assault rifles mm -hmm. as it's claimed. Mm -hmm. um, so. That's something that had, you know, they claim they are investigating. Of course, we know investigations never end there. Uh, after it, nothing happens there or rarely. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the most important things. Mm -hmm. But also the fifth one we can discuss is the rift between TRRC and GRTS. Yeah, uh, this is so interesting that even the cabinet had to sit over it. Mm -hmm. You know, the TRRC, the TRRC gave a... Uh, a contract to QTV, QTV. Mm -hmm. so that they centralize the recording of the proceedings mm -hmm. for media use. Mm -hmm. And uh, the GRTS apparently is not happy. Mm -hmm. um, and GRTS felt that because it's the state broadcaster and this is a state event, it has, it's supposed to have some, ex if not some exclusive right, but at least some, some access some sort of to privilege. the sessions and, uh, you know, so, and the last time I was in uh, the executive secretary of uh, TRRC in the Zababa Galejalo's office, um, of course I was there in my capacity as a journalist covering the event, but also as a member of the, as a as president of the press union. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to him about some of the issues, and you know, it was very clear that you know he he, he was he told me this is the whole issue with GRTS is a misunderstanding. Yeah. But can we, can we start of from communications. there? You think we start from, from I, I, I think I think we can start from there. Um, I just, I have a feeling that if you are a company in business with other companies, mm -hmm. you shouldn't feel that you should be given a special treatment. Like, although GRTS is a state company, uh, they are also, they are t taking uh, fees on advertisements, and they are not doing anything for free as far as their coverage. Maybe coverage is free throughout all the media houses. But other than that, they are in business as much as QTV, as much as any other uh, media house in this country. So if according to how the TRRC uh, of officials have explained it, they have opened it, the bidding, they applied, and the other party had an advantage over them and they were picked, I don't see any reason why that should be a controversy. No, be but, but then, um, let me quickly ask this question. Mm -hmm. Yes, we understand that uh, GRTS is also in business in as much mm -hmm. as QTV is in business. But this is a state affairs that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like you rightfully say, said earlier, mm -hmm. don't you think it would have been quite justifiable if they were given a portion of the coverage of um, the entire TRRC events. I mean, that, that makes sense. Uh, th I think to have only one media house covering this is because of the sensitivities that surround the whole process. Because you cannot open uh, the the seedings to all the media houses to have unlimited access to the information that comes out from there. Because the TRRC have a they have a mandate to make available the information that they think is for public consumption. 
but there are some information that would remain private. So if you have only one media house is covering these events and sharing with the rest, there you have the means to manage what information goes out. Because this part, the, the, the media houses that you have contracted now has a responsibility towards you, right? So yeah, has been this a state uh, television station. Television station. I mean, it's it's tricky. You would expect that they should be given, the, but I think it, it boils down to giving equal opportunities to all. Let, let, all those let, your mind, together, let me pick your mind on this. Um, GRTS is covering the Journey Commission for free. Yeah. And they not only GRTS has in the previous. Uh, state events own exclusive coverage rights over certain issues and they provide clean feeds, mm -hmm. clean feeds at no cost to the state, to media houses. They did that even at the recent state opening of the National Assembly and they covered the Journey Commission at no cost. Mm -hmm. um, do you not think it is reasonable mm -hmm. for TRRC instead of being involved in that cost, huge amount of cost relating to the coverage of QTV, mm -hmm. to enjoy GRTS and see what they can do within their means mm -hmm. to, 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 give, to do what QTV is currently doing, because they said they can do it. If they can cover the, 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 the Janet Commission the way they did it, they said they can do it. And they even live stream the, the, the Janet Commission. I, I, I don't doubt that. I, I just feel like, I mean, from the beginning, if that had happened, if they had negotiated on uh, having GRTS cover the events on pro bono, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have had this controversy. But I think the fact that they, they have opened a bidding process and all of them compete on a fair and level, uh, fair level platform, and the other person had an age, or the other company had an age over this, I think that's where the controversy comes from. I think the TRRC personnel saw it necessary that as long as the media houses are in competition, they should be treated fairly. Yeah. Right? Well, but then, then okay. here is some other thing that also, um, up, uh, from the QTV side, uh, and based on the contract, is also a bit unreasonable. QTV has refused to give clean feeds to media companies, and to iAfrica specifically. They've refused. And when iAfrica even access their feeds mm -hmm. from the TRRC and not place something on their logo, their logo is there, but iAfrica also put their own tag yeah. on the feeds mm -hmm. and QTV removed them. And that, that's not right. That, that's and TRRC could not do anything about it. And when I inquired at that time, mm -hmm. an official there told me they they are even yet to sign the contract. Okay, now you're coming. So that that, that if so if if that they, yeah so so that means it that's that that probably takes it to whole new level. That okay, means so if the contract if the contract been signed yet, that's what the official told me. QTV can now decide to monopolize uh, the information that they got they gather. Because the contract is not compelling them to share. So, so, so when the TRRC also invite journalists to talk to us about the proceedings and how it ought to be covered, mm -hmm. here is what they said. Centralized coverage, which means QTV has won the contract. Mm -hmm. But QTV will provide clean feeds, mm -hmm. clean feeds. It means the feed would not even have QTV's logo. Yep. This is my point. If, co if the contract was signed, this responsibility would have been assigned to QTV. But the contract hasn't been signed according to what they say. Yes, that's what, so that's, that's that's what, what the problem. official told me. What happens um, should in case um, technical problem erupts during the process? Well, what, what would TRRC do? Because in that event, it meant certain information, major information, would be left out. What would TRRC, what do you think TRRC would do? So, my opinion, if you ask me, I don't, I don't know. Because the thing is, even when the QTV, even when iAfrica packed their things, mm -hmm. remember iAfrica is followed a lot mm -hmm. online on this because they, they, they were the only one who was li while live streaming it mm -hmm. from QTV. We were not doing it. Our, our, our rivals, none of them were doing it. Mm -hmm. The newspapers don't do live streaming. Mm -hmm. So, it was iAfrica alone that was doing the live streaming. Mm -hmm. 
And when I Africa lost the feeds from Q, or they were denied, denied the feeds, mm -hmm. I should say, from QTV, mm -hmm. the TRRC itself mm -hmm. was helpless. You know what? They couldn't do anything. They couldn't even go to QTV and told them you must. Because if there is a contract, you will tell them you must. Yeah. Because this is what the contract is. Yeah. So QTV, TRRC apparently told journalists what they could not do. They told journalists they would provide clean feeds to all media houses. And apparently QTV refused to do that. QTV refused not only clean feeds, mm -hmm. but even feeds with, with any sort of, any form of reasonable mm -hmm. media logo, they just, just even a tag, yeah. they refuse that. They so apparently, it shows, it confirms what uh, one official in, at that place told me that there is no contract. Because if there is a contract, clearly yeah. wouldn't it have defined? That, that's that's also my point. If there was yeah. a contract, then they would have a responsibility. But if there is no contract and they are given free access, only them are given free access, then there is a problem. Then what does that tell us about TRRC having? That means they are giving us half truths then. If, yeah, but if also what you're saying is true. But here is another thing. I mean, I mean, when it comes to having an advantage, I think GRTS may have an advantage over all the other media houses, including QTV, as far as countrywide coverage is concerned. Because the TRRC process is supposed to be closer to the people, not just catering for the diaspora. I think when you, uh, when you think about uh, online streaming, mostly we're thinking about those in the diaspora, or maybe some of us who don't have time to watch TV to go back and watch online. But then you have a whole lot of people in the rural areas who will be interested uh, in also following this process because it's really important to them and it's important that they get this information. I think in that regard, GRTS may have an edge uh, over QTV. I'm not sure if that was factored in during the negotiations for the contract, but that is something that needs to be considered as well. The radio. But, yeah, the, the radio, radio. GRTS radio goes That's everywhere. an amazing reach. Yeah, but I think uh, the it seems like the cabinet have has resolved the issue and GRTS well, is... Well, kind of technical because the cabinet cannot resolve this issue. Uh, cabinet would be seen to be interfering have, with the TRRC process. They have given process. a strong recommendation, I think, yes, yes. that GRTS should be given this contract. Well, uh, that it's a bit weird because what the cabinet said was they... They, they said the, the, the ministers should, um, should, should engage the, uh, the... Both parties? Yes, both parties, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then try to resolve the case. But they said going forward, in, in any sort of uh, similar events that are uh, uh, controlled by the state, or that are state events, mm -hmm. GRTS should take the lead. Uh, you know, so the cabinet is not so clear as to what you know ought to be done. I mean, in this, in this, yeah, in yeah. this case. I mean, I, I, for me personally, I hate monopolizing businesses. If you have different entities in a business, you want to have a free competition, right? So it's not going to be fair to other parties. But in this case, we don't know. You want me to read a part of what the president says? It would be interesting yeah. if you can read. So that. Uh, it says that cabinet also reviewed a petition by GRTS demanding that it be allowed access to TRST hearings to use its own equipment to record and transmit the proceedings of the commission. So TR, it, it looks like GRTS is actually not asking for QTV to be out, mm -hmm. but for them also to have access. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, cabinet has tasked Minister of Justice and Information mm -hmm. to further engage both GRTS and TRRC to quickly resolve the impasse. Mm -hmm. Cabinet further resolved that from now on, GRTS should be the first point of call mm -hmm. for all state institutions and or subverted institutions mm -hmm. in need of live streaming and broadcast, except where the state broadcaster does not have the necessary technical capacity to undertake such activities. Makes sense. Reasonable? Yeah, <laughs> reasonable enough. I think um, when I was reading through during the beating, uh, I, I think during a press re release by Baba Galejalo, Dr. Baba Galejalo, he made mention that everybody was called on board mm -hmm. and the reason uh, QTV was given or awarded the contract is because uh, they were cheaper or more reasonable compared. to that effect compared to GRTS. I think GRTS were charging over 800,000 in a week mm -hmm. also, while um, QTV was charging mm -hmm. 150,000. Mm -hmm. So I think that comparison was being done, mm -hmm. but other criteria to prove in or allowing mm -hmm. the state 
media to be media. present alongside QTV makes so much sense, especially since they have, in terms of coverage, they have the edge. Maybe but finally, before we move on, let me just state finally to seal it mm -hmm. that Baba told me, actually Dr. Jalo told me mm -hmm. that it's very likely, very likely, mm -hmm. GRTS will be there on Monday, mm -hmm. Africa will be back on Monday, mm -hmm. and this conflict will be resolved, finally. Great. That's, that's what that's, he told me in his office yeah. on Thursday. Yeah. So another thing you mentioned that caught my attention was the, the catch thing. Or oh, is it the gash? Gash. gash. The gash. Yeah. Uh, so it has been revealed uh, over these past week, uh, days that some guns have been intercepted mm. at the GPA. And this really scared so many people, especially it coincided at a time when the country is really looking forward to having so many uh, unfavorable uh, on survey revelations mm -hmm. about past violations. So, I mean, I have been in quarters where people were speculating that this must have been jammer related or something else happening. And we were really looking forward to the police IGP coming forward with an information to clear the air. And I'm very happy that the press, press release have been circulating since yesterday to that effect. But what do you make of this? Why would a company import that huge amount of guns Hunting, unauthorized. Hunting guns, quote unquote. Yeah, hunting and recreational use. It was not even mentioned for security. 1,000. It says hunting and recreational use. Why would any company need so much guns for that? Especially importing guns that heavy, that were unauthorized. What, what are you speculating? 38 of which are, not, are, are unauthorized. Yeah, unauthorized. So, so here is my problem. My problem starts with the importation. Mm -hmm. But let's also look at the police reaction. Yeah. In any it's not, yeah, in, it's, no, 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 it's not even in, startling. It's in it's any reasonable democracy, mm -hmm. democracy survives on free dissemination of free and quick dissemination of information. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the only country where mm -hmm. it will be said mm -hmm. that there is a bomb mm -hmm. in the sea. Mm -hmm. And the government will be quiet until tomorrow mm -hmm. to come and talk to the citizens. Leave the citizens in pure panic mm -hmm. in, in a very dreadful situation mm -hmm. government should come out and calm down people mm -hmm. it's since the the day before like in the morning mm -hmm. everywhere it was reported it was on online it was mm -hmm. everywhere mm -hmm. it took the police almost a day mm -hmm. to even come out and say anything at all mm -hmm. almost a day so for me, that was the first, first, first terrible mistake. Yeah. You cannot allow fear to take control of the situation. Exactly. People are saying, oh, go on intercepted, go on intercepted, go on intercepted on social media, everywhere. Mm -hmm. The reasonable thing to do within three seconds, the police want, should come out and say, able to manage this, the situation. yes, yeah. the police should come out immediately and say, this is what we have so far. Mm -hmm. Nobody waits until investigations are done to come out with anything. Yeah. In the Western world, they give preliminary, in, preliminary information mm -hmm. as it comes yeah. to the media, like that. Police, Twitter, police, everywhere. Yeah. It's, they control the narrative. But would you, you don't blame only the police for this? Because I also, I mean, everything we have shown, we have seen was shown on uh, the, I don't know, alternative media. Like you would have WhatsApp, Facebook. I mean, everything I saw was on WhatsApp and Facebook, but we have not seen... Uh, these things coming out on mainstream media, or was it? Yeah, because mainstream media tried to reach out, like even ourselves, mm -hmm. to PRO, and he wouldn't pick up his call. So this is the problem. In the Gambia, police would, there will be a coup, like the Gambia style. There will be a coup, and it will take 24 hours before the, be the, public, before the public know anything. This is torture. Because people, when people hear these kind of things, mm -hmm. they are afraid. They want someone to come and tell them the truth. That's Either nice. we yeah. are going down I mean, or were, we will be here. It's torture. Who did not believe it. That's what I'm saying. There were people who did not believe it. I was discussing with my brother yesterday. Until I had to show him the press, press release, he wouldn't believe that this actually happened. He thought he was a horse. 
But that is the problem. So we come back to the original question of why would a company like that? Because I have my own speculations. And I know that war is very profitable. What are your For the capitalists, war is very profitable. So you have uh, a company that is interested in energy mining because they are already in the sand business. Yeah. You don't know what is found with that sand. And uh, they have interest in other areas, importing guns. For me, that is signaling me to what is already happening in other African countries where we have uh, speculations about uh, foreign companies or foreign businesses fueling uh, the stability in a country in order to be able to access their resources. So in my mind, I'm like, is this a parallel or is this just something else? We don't even need, do we even have animals to hunt? <laughs> yeah, what animals are found here to be gone? Hunted by such heavy guns. There and apparently today, can I read of the course. press release where Please they do. said? Um, so today they actually sent a press release. And the press release says, it says that their attention has been drawn to uh, media rounds, you know, media reports doing, uh, reports doing media rounds on, on, of the interception by police of a container of firearms at the seaport. Mm -hmm. Being the, they are the center of these reports, we deem it necessary to release this statement and shed light on the event. So apparently they are saying mm. that uh, Gaj Security is a duly registered company on the laws of the Gambia objective to provide private security for businesses and private households, as well as deal in the sale of hunting and recreational firearms. Yeah, hunting and recreational firearms. Dealing, meaning? Yes. Selling? Yes. Okay. So it would so it's be... Not for their own personal use? Absolutely. Okay. So, and they're saying, in, you know, it would be recalled that for the past nine decades, the importation of firearms for hunter recreational purposes has been regulated by Arms and Ammunition, mm -hmm. you know, Act, uh, 1924. Under this Act, holders of a fi valid firearm import license may import certain categories of light firearms for the purpose of hunting and recreation. Mm -hmm. Indeed, at various times, various businesses and individuals have held such lands and have, have legally imported hunting guns for especially in the region's provinces where wild pigs hunting is very common and widely practiced and also for by farmers in scary to scare in scaring away mm -hmm. large animals for destroying their grounds and rice fields. You know, um, I do not have a problem with them important ammunition. Mm -hmm. But uh, my major question is, mm -hmm. why would they bring over 1,000 plus, right, mm -hmm. uh, unauthorized ammunition into the country? Because that... Yeah. 1,200 1, 1, 1, 1, and something. Yes. The rest, they the entire. within the law. So here is, I have two theories yeah. here. I mean, I have three theories. I explained the other one, which mm -hmm. I hope is not the likely case. Okay. Uh, so my second theory is they may be involved in smuggling, go, uh, arms smuggling. Because why would through they Gambia? Through Gambia. To it's other possible. countries? It's possible, right? Or to dissident individuals outside. Mm -hmm. uh, because if they are in business and they are selling these guns, obviously these unauthorized guns that have been brought into this country, there are people who will be in need of them. So they may be in smuggling or they may just have heavy ambitions to trade uh, these guns that they know if they had applied for a permission, they would not get permission. For Interesting. Um, quickly, let's go to the um, this continuum of the Faraba Banta. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I would like us to like quickly delve into because I feel it's a very interesting one. Yeah. But I would like you to tell us more. Yeah. So the Faraba Banta one, the president. Uh, apparently issued a press release to say that he's discontinuing the trial. Mm -hmm. um, he said this is as a result of the pleas that he had received from people of Faraba. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it did appear as the Minister of Justice, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, didn't either agree with this or he had to find a way to say he didn't agree with it. It was not his doing. But the Minister of Information came out um, then the following day, no, yeah, the following day to mm -hmm. say that because this happened at night. Mm -hmm. The following day, the Minister of Information um, came out to say, the Interior came out to say that um, this information that comes out of the State House was 
miscommunicated. Not inaccurate, but... Yeah, it was wrong. So he's saying that actually the request was made through him, mm -hmm. which makes it legal, mm -hmm. but that he communicated the information to the State House, and State House, apparently the President is just saying that he agrees with. Mm -hmm. he, if, if, if the... But that's if not he, what the press really says. No, but that's, not, that's where we, I will yeah, come to that. Yeah, stupid. Yeah. So, so that's apparently the problem. A lot okay. of people are saying it's window dressing. You, you agree with this? No, we are not stupid. Like, here's the thing. The thing that really saddens me is how we cannot differentiate politics from non-political matters, right? So here people have a concept. The concept is the president can do anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have the layman believe in this, and then we have our state officials who understand that that is not the case, and they play along this, uh, this concept of the ordinary people and they miss everything up, or they mess everything up, because there was so much hope with the outcome of this commission. Mm -hmm. Like people really look forward to this, and when it came out, even though there were controversies, but we really hope that our institutions are going to be able to implement this to the latter, so that we have some level of confidence mm -hmm. in those institutions. So it is beyond the president to uh, remove or remove a case that is already in court that ha is of criminal nature. It is beyond the president. So the president cannot pardon. Even the, the victims themselves cannot pardon. So they are saying... Because this is a criminal man. So they are saying the president doesn't necessarily... The, was, did not pardon. The president was merely saying... But the press release says the president pardons. The president discontinued. Discontinuance. I think that's the word. Yeah. Call for the discontinuance of the yeah, Farabat, Farabat case. So they are saying actually that the Office of the President's media release made a mistake. Semantics. But we all know that is not the use case. Use of language. Yeah, but I feel that, um, I mean, I, what I understood from the, the Justice Press, uh, sorry, the Justice Minister was that perhaps the President misunderstood his position because when it came out first that the President has <laughs> called for the discontinuance of this case, my, for me, my reaction was, where was the Justice Minister? Where was the Attorney General? Do they not consult him? Or did, was he just uh, turning a blind eye to something he knows is illegal? Because this is illegal. In some countries, this would attract a vote of no confidence, really. Um, it can only happen in the Gambia. Just a quick one. Uh, Yesterday, uh, the spokesperson for Gambia, uh, Ibrahim Sankara. Sankara, also gave a clarification on the lingering controversy over the Farba mm -hmm. Strat um tragedy. Mm -hmm. And he made mention, um, quickly he says, uh, in the face of widespread allegation in, in, do, in those and insinuations that the presidency may have discontinued persecution of the Faraba Banta case. The public is hereby informed that the matter has, in fact, not been discontinued mm -hmm. and that the police investigations are ongoing. What do you make of this? Ibrahim puts too much energy into what is highly unnecessary. Look, the truth is, uh, the, 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 the presidency blundered. Mm -hmm. The language, the, lang the, the press release communicated what the president did. Mm -hmm. Ba did what he had to do to save the commander in Kiev, come out and, and take the hit, mm -hmm. and like all soldiers do, you take the bullet for your boss. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what Ba did. Yeah. Ba came out to say, that's my own understanding. Yeah. Ba came out to say, well, it's the use of language. Mm -hmm. You know, the presidency should have said that the request came through me because that's a legal channel, mm -hmm. and I just informed the president about it. Mm -hmm. And the president was I merely mean, communicating to me that he agreed. Mm -hmm. And in the process, he also issued a press release to say he has discontinued the trial. You know, <laughs> Which yes, is kind of... You know what you I know, think about so, this? I think what Barr said may be true. Yes. Or may not be true. Here is what I think happened. You have Faraba people, through their al -Kalu, seek pardon for the police officers from the president. And the president either did not inform the attorney general or did inform the attorney general but did not wait for the results or they, they, uh, did not wait for their response. And he was ill-advised, either ill-advised or he totally did not understand these processes. Right? And he did what he did and then the justice minister comes now to remedy the situation. But the bigger question is, how did the press office 
of four people came to write a press release like this. And it didn't trigger even a, a, a bell in the ads. And, and when they are done, they, they release it like that. I mean, personally me, I'm not a legal person, but when I see anything that mm -hmm. is of legal in nature, mm -hmm. or anything that has to do with professional stuff, mm -hmm. I seek advices. Mm -hmm. ring, a, ring one person and say, look, but this one, is this likely? Can the president even discontinue a trial like yeah, that? A criminal trial. You know, so, so in that kind of case, I think maybe the office of the president could have yeah. could have actually... So the bottom line is they didn't. They didn't understand the issues. One and two, they did not seek advice mm -hmm. uh, before they did what they did. And perhaps sadly because they, they may have felt this is a political goal to score. And it was a real mess. So we have yeah. three more points, yeah. three more minutes uh, yeah. until this particular thing is done, segment is done. So probably we may want to run quickly into the TRRC. Okay. Because this is the most important important thing yeah. uh, we, we, we've had in our transition. Okay. Uh, finally, mm -hmm. we're beginning to get into the minds of Jame. We're beginning to know him. We're beginning to, to interact with people who know him, mm -hmm. people who slept with him, people who drink with him, people who did the coup with him, mm -hmm. people who've seen him being angry, mm -hmm. seen him smiling, laughing, and at the same time crying. You know, yeah. people who know him. Mm -hmm. And a lot's been said. I mean, people who train him. People who've seen him break rules and, you know, yeah, it's exciting. It's, it's very exciting and I think a lot of people were looking forward to this. It got to a point where people felt perhaps the TRRC may not even begin because it has taken so long. So it's, uh, it's, it's very good that they have started now and I, I'm not surprised at the fact that they have started with these three people because uh, according to their communications, they were going to start from state by state from 1994 and these were the people who were there since 1994 and they were servicemen so they were people who like you said no jamme in and out so it's not it's not surprising that they have started with these people but my question to you especially since you have been there what was the most revealing thing that came out exciting you know for me it, TRRC you want to cry and at the same time you want to laugh like TRRC it's, it's not all boring then that's exciting. So the, the thing is, for me, the most exciting thing, I, if someone called me yesterday and asked me, what's your takeaway from this week at TRZ? I said, knowing Jambe, of course. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've never known our sultan, the, 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 the master chief of the Islamic State, actually drinks alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody thinks about that. But there were spe speculations. Of like course, that. yes, but you've not seen a confirmation from some guy who trained him and sat down with him to tell you, yeah. actually, the sultan himself drinks alcohol. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody said, Jamme takes cocaine. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, but, but actually, all the people who've testified before the commission, who've interacted with Jambe in, in no small way, actually said he drinks alcohol. And this is not like he's like, say, he drinks when he's happy, like he drinks, like really drinks, yeah. you know? So, so, but this is the guy who comes out and made it a habit to swear, I will drink alcohol and eat pork. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's as if he didn't, he was his neighbor. For me, it tells me, you, the no person that Jambe is, like no one knows him. Like this person with so much identity, mm -hmm. that he shows you, what you know, what, what suits that moment. Mm -hmm. he, he, has a, he has a way of portraying an image that suits a particular moment. Mm -hmm. And then another, another moment is something else. Another moment is something else. Like some guy who is just a very he's disturbed person from the beginning. He's a psychopath. I mean, that's, that's the same. Or a sociopath. Like some guy yeah. who has some internal behavioral issues because they said he even has a problem following orders, discipline. Mm -hmm. And from the beginning, so for me, two things, quickly, let me just say that. Mm -hmm. TRRC is telling us finally who has ruled us. Mm -hmm. He's thinking. Mm -hmm. We are getting into his minds and his behavior. Mm -hmm. We're getting into it. Mm -hmm. We're getting into his attitude. But then the sad part, mm -hmm. we are getting into the crimes. We never know what happens beyond the walls. And finally, the walls have been torn down. And this shock, you've seen Sirif cried. A hardened military captain crying. Sirif Gomez. I mean, you know that. You, I mean, and I have a friend, interestingly, I have a friend. 
when he saw Sheriff crying, this guy is a journalist who was detained for several days, mm -hmm. I think for several weeks. He came out, you know what he told me? Mm -hmm. After this guy was released, he was taken to Senegal. Mm -hmm. And that's where he was with his wife. He ran away to Senegal with his wife. When he came back, he told me, you know what happened to me? Mm -hmm. I cried when I heard Sheriff this Sheriff. guy crying. Because the trauma he is talking about, because Sheriff said for one month, mm -hmm. And even sometimes it happens to him today. He cannot sleep on the bed. He had to sleep at a bed, at a, at a, on the floor because he's used to sleeping on a plank of wood. And this friend of mine told me, Mustafa, I had a problem with my wife because I was always sleeping with the key to our house. I've never felt comfortable to place the key anywhere because it seems to me as if someone would come, take the key from me and open the door and they come for me again. Trauma, but it's a therapy yeah. because people are speaking and you, you they're crying, they're leaving it. Yeah. Thank you very much, That's Mustafa. The RRC. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mustafa. That was quite insightful from the topic of the TRRC to the gacha ammunition, unauthorized ammunition, and also to the discontinue of the Faraba Banta um, press release by the president. So now we'll be inviting our girl Onyi Musada to give us insights <coughs> on what happened, the most um, trending information on our social media. Nima? Um, so, I mean, we don't have anything that is different from what we've discussed, uh, what has been trending, uh, especially on WhatsApp these past two days was the guns that have been intercepted. And we also had the Faraban Bantan case. Uh, and, and Baro and Dabo saga continues. But Mustafa, we you know more about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. I mean, we've all seen it on social media after Baro went to meet Combo South people. We've not, not seen much of that. I mean, I don't think we did, you, did we? Of course, it was all over social media when Baro and Mid Compos out people and were saying um, you would be a uh, Oh, I saw, I saw something on him. How would you have slaughtered the lion and, yeah, I, I saw and give the lion about calling the vultures. Yeah, uh, and give S the lion S to S the vultures. SOB, I mean, if you translate it from Mandinka, that you would have to be an SOB if, if you know what that means. Uh, if you kill a lion, only to have give it to vultures, vultures to eat. I mean, this, it's, this seems to be a favorite uh, term that Baro uses because he's used that in reference to himself uh, when he was defending his association with UDP. And now it seems that he's using the same term uh, also to justify why he's not... I think this is apparently no the most trending, UDP. isn't it? Yeah, that has, that has been trending a lot. I don't know why I forgot about He that. said something very specific about yeah. Dembo by Force, that he, he described Dembo by Force, who is apparently has been rumored for several times as being in the borough camp. Mm -hmm. That Dembo, Nenga Dembo sort of man, Mansura model. Yeah. This is revealing, isn't it? Very. I mean, yeah. So, borough versus that was still raging. Yeah, it seems like this is going to be a very long battle. Maybe we should just fasten our seats and see how it unfolds. It's very exciting. Two for years of war. Opponents. Uh, to see this happening because Baro and Davos marriage was a very attractive one but now it, it must be very exciting <coughs> now it's a marriage of convenience yeah. really apparently interesting yeah so that is all we have on social media it's nothing that we haven't discussed already maybe we should just move on to something else thank you very much Nima Sutter that was quite insightful talking but about except that uh, Baro yeah Mustafa except that I may be tempting to say that I mean, it's, it's actually, if you look at both sides, mm -hmm. I know we've discussed this before, but if you look at detention mm -hmm. and you look at state house gatherings, mm -hmm. there are two, th three things that people are discussing, and I want us to also look at it, okay. you know, since we have a few minutes. Of course. To look at, one, on the other hand, political meetings at state house, mm -hmm. In two, the question of the state of mind of the president, mm -hmm. which is very important, mm -hmm. uh, is becoming highly partisan, is becoming highly uneasy, mm -hmm. and is becoming, he's sowing a lot of insecurity yeah. and paranoid. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we discussed that in relation to his mandate. Exactly. But I also, was, I was going to I say in relation to the people. 
Because now you have a responsibility towards the people, and for almost three years now, we haven't seen much of what Baro has done for this country in terms of development, in terms of reforms, although reforms are slowly taking place, but it's not to a speed where you would expect something to come out before his time's end. Uh, so you have all of these things happening, and then you have a president who, when we were voting into office, we expected to deliver these reforms for us. And that would be his only mandate, and then he would give way to somebody else. And now you have that person be so engrossed in the politics of things, even more so than anything else that is in it. So that, I think that's where many people's frustration is. And this, you can say this for, I mean, even people in the countryside. There are people who are really frustrated with this president. So you see, I, I want to pick both of your mind. Each, each of you can, can look at it. Um, when the president said, Barros said that he was like in Mandinka, he said, Mubuka Jatofa did well. I mean, Ibekala didn't put him out. So, 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 this simply means you would not, you, you have to be an illegitimate child or some, something of that sort. Mm -hmm. To, to kill a lion and give it to the vultures to devour it. Mm -hmm. Was he the lion? It looks like it. But he has hailed himself as a lion. This is not the first he, time he, he did He killed that. the lion. He, this is oh, not the first he, time he did or, that. Or, or everybody killed the lion. So in this scenario, <laughs> Jame is the lion and he is the hunter. Uh, who, Such a brave hunter like Abu Khan. Yeah, a brave hunter <laughs> who killed the lion. And now he killed the lion and he's in a position to enjoy his... Uh, fit and somebody else wants it. Like, that is the interpretation. So, 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 this is what I want you to tell, look at it. Maybe you will tell me what you think, both of you. Mm -hmm. When he said that, for me, in his mind, I am, I am looking into someone who is, whose perception of power is that this is not service delivery, mm -hmm. but it's, it's an I enjoyment, an enjoyment. He, I think he feels entitled. I think that's what I feel. I think he feels entitled. He feel he feel he has done something extraordinary, and he needs some that reward. We owe him. Yeah, he has to be rewarded for it. But is that the case? Like, what has Baro sacrificed that nobody in this country has? Like, there are so many people. The TRC is going to reveal this. Who have laid their lives for this country? Who have been killed for this country? Whose blood uh, has been used to achieve what we have already achieved? Baro is, I mean, until 2016, December 2016, nobody has heard of this guy before. I'm, I'm not going to belittle his contribution, but he hasn't done anything extraordinary that no, nobody else has done. So I don't think that gives him the, 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 the mandate to rule, especially if the government people have given you a very specified mandate that you are not delivering on. Let's look at destruction and mandate. Do you have some time? Uh, we have three more minutes to go and then we'll quickly take. So, so, so yeah. let's look at the mandate and destruction. Barrow's mandate is to do some reforms. But like Salah said the last minute, mm -hmm. the last press conference he has had, mm -hmm. now Barrow is an executive president. Mm -hmm. It appears mm -hmm. we're screwed, aren't we? But most of the, the pledges are, predicate, are, are premised on reforms if mm -hmm. they don't come. Probably the pledges would come. That's the only thing Probably that, mm -hmm. that would affect the 20, 20, 2019 budget. But it's Barrow screwing up. But the only thing that can, that can give us an indication that we have transitioned from Jame era to any other era would be the reforms. If the reforms have not happened, then the transition hasn't happened. Yeah, but then again, if the pledges didn't come, there is going to be an in, in unimaginable was, gap on the budget. What was the pledge? The pledge was... A lot of, a lot oh, of. You mean the, the money that has been pledged? Yeah. To the from country? Brussels. The okay. 1.7 billion. But that's also Don't the thing. Who so would sure. build a country based on somebody else's pledge? That is the problem itself. Like you have, the reason why we vote people into office is to think about how to make resources and how to develop our countries using those resources. Apparently, so we are far from that. So if you just hold your hands and you wait for some pledges that have been made that could either be given or not given, then you are setting yourself for failure. Really? Finally, 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 Dabo apparently has some problems with Bao. It's That's out in the open. Obviously. 
and the vice president and his president mm -hmm. are having problems. I, Don't I you think, think this is this is this is this is affecting the growth of the I, country? I think, One I think should go. Either one of them is waiting for the other person to make a move to remove. But you don't think... I think Barrow wants Dabo to resign on his own oblivion so that people will not blame him for it, especially the UDP camp. Yeah. But Dabo also wants Barrow to be the one to fire him so that he has something to say, so that he will not be regarded as somebody who has betrayed uh, a and president then, that and has... And in the meantime, the country suffers. Time. Yeah. Because so the vice president and his president of, are not seeing eye to eye. It's only a matter of time until somebody gets to do something. Thank you very much, Nima Seta. That was quite insightful. And I believe our viewers are learning a lot from all this conversation being held here on Kid Factor. And now uh, it's time for uh, the entrepreneur. And every edition of the program, we always, uh, uh, we always profile a Gambian business who is clinch on uh, creating employment for young Gambians. And today, we will be going to see the CEO of VIP Fashion, who goes by the name Suleiman Davis. Suleiman, we watch. Suleiman Davis, the Kakesiri. The VIP fashion shop, the VIP fashion shop. Well, man, business, we must say, I got done. So, if you solve the problem, if you solve the problem, you can do the business. I have a good friend. 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 I have a t-shirt. I have a Adidas. I have a Dalla Jolani. Flatters. Different kind of bagasse. I have a good friend. I have a good friend. Um, problems. You know, but they have problem. Problem. You have to come. Need new. Major cobagas. So, fey be. Do my fey. You know, do my fey. I'm not new. I'm not new. But 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 I'm Ya ni mah indi bagasi juga. Ya ni sun kau tapi indi bagasi juga. Nampak fana kalau emrek nu jaya kau fat fat muzik. Baik kaum yuvi gorek lendir dia. Sen dressi indi sol kau example bukan ke jenis ni program muzik ni. Aiyah masih program ni wali wala lena ni. Kau tapi dia indi bagas indi bagas. Amga mu muna gau jat fat fat. Ini muna jaya bagasi juga. Right now, you're five to five nega. You're five to five nega. The job. Well, in five years' time, I'm not going to get a first job like you're going to do it. Or sebab kita nak ego sales kita nak dem, nuk kita pun nak expect more more shop.
fi am fi so bi bugay ñew rafa yo mbara ngane jete kuna johnson lek jete kuna si johnson si bori taxi for la location mi nek am force number 37405511 benam 7642280 non moy business number 37405511 benam 7642280 Buying a plot can be easy or maybe a tedious task sometimes, especially when you have so many real estate companies, agents, landowners, and even sometimes so-called landlords all calling to buy their properties. Getting the land is the easiest part, but owning the land with genuine documentation is a problem. We have seen unprecedented court cases of people going to court to settle land issues. If you're looking to buy a plot or a build home with no risk of stress, guys, look for the right real estate company. At EJ Investments, we don't just sell plots, we build communities. Where any plot you buy from us comes with access to water, electricity, internal roads, and other social amenities. We guarantee you genuine contract documentations the moment you pay a deposit and a complete handover of your title deeds as soon as completing payment. We currently operate three projects in strategic locations, selling service plots and built homes in our estate to Jennings Seafront, Sanjing Seaview Estate and our Gunjur Seafront Coastal Highway Estate. Our plots are affordable from only $90,000 you can own a home at our Gunjur Seafront Coastal Highway Estate and from $200,000 you can own a home of your dream at our Sanjing Seaview and Lakeview Estate. Our two Jering Seafront estate starts from $300,000. Plot sizes ranges from 20 by 20, 20 by 25, and 25 by 25. And we offer an option of 30% deposit and two year payment plans. Welcome from the entrepreneur and now to the special guest. Our special guest is Mr. Shea Omar Jaro. Shea Omar Jaro is the director for creative and performing arts from the National Center. Um, Center for Arts and Culture, and his mandate is to develop um, mandate for the development and promotion of the Gambia intangible cultural products. The creative industry of the Gambia, that is music, theater, film, fashion, visual, and hand and craft. Mr. Shea Omar, you're welcome to the branch for the very first day. Thank you very much. So, we would like you to tell us what the National Center for Arts and Culture stands for, its mandate, what it does, and then we'll also be really delighted for you to share, um, share with us on the upcoming event of um, the Kankoran Festival. Share, Omar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Joy, it's a pleasure to be on your platform. Thank you. I understand it has been um, actually a talk of time nowadays. Because I don't know whether is it the critical nature of the program or, so. or is it the controversial nature of the <laughs> program. But welcome. Thank you very much for welcoming here today and uh, for hosting me here today. Actually, the National Center for Arts and Culture is the NCAC. And uh, unfortunately, you still have people who still say National Council for Arts and Culture. When uh, I think everybody should know that now it's NCAC does not really mean National Council, because we are no more a National Council. National Center for Arts and Culture, it's a government program. It's being mandated by an Act of Parliament in 2004, which actually brings in the bringing together of all the uh, cultural institutions together. That is the intangible cultural heritage and the tangible cultural heritage. The tangible cultural heritage are the museums, sites, that is the likes of the museums, the Gambia National Museum and other museums around in the country, and uh, the sites like the uh, uh, Juvure, the Fort Bullens, the Wasus, and all that, the House, those are all, you know, tangible. So there is a section <laughs> right underneath that, that looks into its development and promotion of that, especially for keeping our tangible cultural heritage in place. And the other aspect that um, uh, the National Center for Arts and Culture operates on is the preservation, promotion, and development of the 
intangible, intangible cultural heritage. The intangible cultural heritage is uh, our cultural heritage that we cannot touch, but we practice them. We have to like our music. You cannot touch our music. You cannot touch our films physically like what you see. No, that's why you, you're touching the theme. Maybe you can say that. But these are all intangible cultural things. We express ourselves through them. And our dances, you cannot hold any dance in your hand and say, this is our dance. You cannot hold on our song and say, this is our song. The same thing applies to all the other facets, especially all that are in the creative industry. Like whether it's handicraft, that is also, and the visual arts. These are all things that we express ourselves as a culture, or as a tradition. That's why, you know, you have, um, uh, today, for example, I am in a real traditional stuff. Because I'm feeling motivated that I'm coming to talk about the Kankuran thing. So a Kankuran must be dressed in a Jaffo. When they would say, when the Wole Mula is said, then you say the, what they call the Mamolu will dress up things like this, which are in Fatarus. And, you know, it's being shown like a Marinero, mm -hmm. you know, which, in which you look at it. But it's very traditional and ancient. You know, nowadays you don't see this kind of, you know, dresses that they Or the Konsim Barul will used to put on this. Things. They are very traditional, initiated rights in the Mandin culture mm -hmm. because they will use the Fatarul for those things. It's usually the day that the, the people, were, this is what they will put up for the Kintagos so that it helps in dancing. This helps you very much in dancing when you, it gives you the air and you feel the happy feeling. So these are all our intangible cultural heritage. These are things that you cannot touch. You can hardly not touch, but you can feel them. You can enjoy them and end them. So basically, this is what the National Center for Arts and Culture does. And the third mandate that is just recently, you know, um, uh, with us on our mandate is the protection of copyright. That is the protection of the intellectual product of uh, intellectuals, you know, the intellectual products of artists. So um, that is also part of our mandate to make sure that people, we fight against piracy. We make sure that, you know, people don't steal people's program. People don't use people's program freely and um, they are actually being compensated. So we are also mandated to do that, and we are driving on these three fields at the moment. So basically, this is the mandate of the National Center for Arts and Culture, NCAC. Interesting. Um, we are aware that uh, by next week, can you kindly remind us the date for the Tankoran Festival? 18, 19, and 20. Good. We are also aware that um, there would be an event hosted in Janjabure, uh, called the Kankuran Festival. Yes. We want you to enlighten us and our viewers on this. Yeah, you have uh, what we call the uh, National Calendar of Events. In part of my mandate, as the Director for Arts, I always develop the National Calendar of Events for government. I take this to part of government's plan. What is government's plan for you? Or, of course, we know we know what's a government blueprint, which is the NDP, National Development Plan. And the agenda we have there as a part is to develop um, tourism-centered, culture-centered tourism. tourism. Culture-centered tourism. And in developing that, we cannot rely on what we used to have, which is the three S, sun, science, sea, and sun. This is what we used to promote, tourism. When you're coming to Africa, we will always give a beautiful beach, you will show the sun sign, you will show the sun, how beautiful these are. But nowadays, this branding of the Gambia is not working anymore because it's almost outdated in the sense that um, you have almost 80% of our tourists that are coming here, they are repeaters. They will tell you, I've been in the Gambia for 40 times, I've been in the Gambia for 50 times, I've been in the Gambia for, I've been going and coming in the Gambia for 38 years. Some of those people, they are even older than you. They are coming to the Gambia. Since they started coming to the Gambia, it's even older than yourself. And every other year they will come, or every year they will come. So what can you sell them that will impress them? They've been coming in the Gambia for 40 times, 40 years. Somebody who's coming to the Gambia for sea, sun, and sunshine would have been mindful now again. And uh, unfortunately, with the coming of this uh, climate change, you don't need to fly all over from Europe to come down to Africa for sunshine. You can see, simply go to Madrid. More beautiful beaches and more beautiful sun. You have them in Madrid, in you know Spain and the like. So you don't need definitely to come leave Europe to come to Africa for any holiday and based on those natural environments. Because now with the climate change, they have even better ones. They have more beautiful beaches. 
So they are not coming here for those things anymore. So what we need to sell them, that can make them come here over and over and again, and they will never be satisfied They selling them our culture. Because by the time we sell you our Jola culture, our Fuller culture, our Syrian culture, our Mandin culture, our Fula, um, 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 Jola culture, Man, Wall of culture, and Mandin culture, all these cultures, by the time we finish showing you each one of these in digits, it would be maybe part of your lifetime. Because you have, each one of these have what we call uh, the simple term of um, uh, various ceremonies, life cycle ceremonies. Like you know, the Majagos have a very interesting ceremony, which is part of a life cycle ceremony, which is burial. Oh my God, you have to see a Majago burial. It's the most interesting thing in the world. A Majago burial, it's a ceremony. Despite it's sad, and it's, you know, it's a loss of stuff, but their burial is fantastic. It's a shame need to say. You go to Fuller marriage, Fuller's marriage, you know, it's traditional and fantastic. When they will even, you know, they do they betrothed the both the bride and the groom, both of them. Here, when we taka, we only chetele the the the, 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 the seed. But for them, they chetele both the seed and the the, the, the jacket. So you see, that's also another interesting thing. So we have you demanding na na kulio. This was in Gente. Oh my God, fantastic! These are all things that we can never. And showing them. And when you show Manding source tradition here today, another one in the, So a festival like that in particular, that's why we developed all our festivals in niche, what you call niche market. So in that regard, what we did is we had to go around and check on every community what is their strength, what do they have that is really strong in that area that we can really use as a niche market, like as, as an advantage point, as a selling point. For them and then we develop that then based on that we develop the festival to create a community festival for the area so we why we start with for example like um the bara the last festival we've just ended you know which is the bara for bullen cultural uh, colonial history colonial heritage festival it's a festival of colonial heritage what we try to impact in that festival is one to attract british and Spanish, because these are two agencies, and Portuguese, these are two um, um, nations that have participated largely around our slave trade in Africa, especially in the Gambia. So, and the Nyomingas are the first people to interact with them, because when you come to the estuary, it's Nyomin that you first reach. In fact, by then, they didn't sense of Banyun's existence as well. So they interacted mostly around Nyomi. That's why you have Fort Bullen is in Nyomi. Uh, James Island is in Nyomi. And so much of those, so they are the community that have interacted with the white very well. They sold the first land that the whites have in Africa here around, it's in Nyomi. That is the Secret Mile, which is Bara, where you call Fort Bullen today. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, all these people, all these countries, um, areas, they have a niche market. So we developed that festival as a festival of Nyomi cultural heritage, you know, so as to blend together the heritage between um, Bara all the way to Betente. Betente is part of Senegal. They are all Nyomi. Nyomi stretches from uh, Bara up to Betente, part of Senegal. That's where you have Tuba, Kuta, all those are part of Nyomi. That's why you have Nyombato. They still call them Nyombato. Traditionally, the Senegalese do try to reform the names, but that part is still called Nyombato which is Nyombato Nyomi, which is a traditional language for the people on the beach side and the people on the highland. You know, the Nyominkas and the Nyombato. So you have to, so we try to amalgamate both festivals and have a cross-cultural linkage. We have one big one called the Nyomi Badia Festival, which is a cross-cultural festival we do together with Senegal in Tubakuta. So a replica of it is on the other side. In Nyombato does one, to government of Senegal, in Senegal, we do that. And then now we also do one again on the part of Gambia because Nyomi is still part of Gambia. It's Nyombato that went to Senegal. So Nyomi and Nyombato, they also come together because these are the people that interacted with the colonial heritage. So we have the Nyomi Badia festival that takes place in Bar. 
So the other festivals that we have also, which also has a niche market, for example, I said, the life cycle visas, you know, the life cycle ceremonies of ethnic, that we showcase that in Sanya. In Sanya, when you come there, that's when we mix this, you know, cultures. You see the fuller, we show the fuller tradition, the Jola shows, the Jola initiation, then we try to mix those things out there so that people can see differently. And when you want to see only drum and dance, that festival, for example, Kato festival, attracts only institutions. In fact, we have got a lot of, uh, I know, I brought in three institutions, like uh, the, um, the groups, you know, the Golden Groups. The Golden Groups, it's, an, it's, a, it's a big, you know, network in UK that mobilizes dancers and drums within UK institutes and bring them around Africa. I know I met them in Nigeria, then I brought them now in the Gambia. So they are also coming, they bring in people in the Gambia now for festivals in Sanya. So they bring in all the best choreographers. They try to attract choreographers in the UK and dancers, teachers, and you know, those who are training percussion and things like that, they come for that festival because what that, that festival only promotes the Jola dance, the Fola dance, the Manding dance, the uh, traditional dance, and they have lessons, dance classes there. So that's why that festival takes almost a week. And because when people come, they stay there for a week, training and rehearsing, trying to learn, they take dance classes and the like. So that festival is a festival of drum and dance. That's the Katong International Cultural Festival. So now I come to Janjambure. The Kangura, the festival you are asking. So since we have already got all these festivals, and this is their niche, I can tell you all these 12, why we have created them. They are all different. So that now a tourist would not come here and say, no, if I don't need this one time, you will particularly be interested about colonialism. If you are not interested in colonialism, you might be interested in, you know, in, uh, in drum and dance. If you are not interested in drum and dance, you will be interested maybe in events like the Kangura. So the Kangura, First of all, since the Gambia, um, uh, we fight together with Senegal to make the Kankuram as an, um, as an intangible cultural masterpiece, which we fight together with Senegal, and then it was approved by UNESCO. So it's a UNESCO proclamation. You know, the Kankuram, it's an intangible cultural masterpiece, which has been recognized in the um, uh, UNESCO um, inscriptions, and uh, it's being, they built Two centers. One Kampurang center was built in uh, in Bur, because Bur also in Senegal they have um, uh, they have a tradition and culture in Kampurang. Bur in Senegal they are uh, you know Kampur, they have a Kampurang tradition. And then for us, Denjabure in the Gambia also has a traditional you know uh, relations to Kampurang and the like. So when you say in the Gambia Kampurang, you are talking about Denjabure as a community. So there. We went back. Since we also have a Kankuran center there, the Kankuran center is actually to, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a center of excellence to be able to do research. You know, research information compoundment around this masterpiece and initiation. That is the Mandic Initiative Right. Because the Kankuran is very much associated to the Mandic Initiative Right. So we have this center at the, Kank uh, the Kankuran Center in Dendaburi, which actually documents and only in, info gives information about the Kankura and the initiation ceremony, the initiative ceremony of the Manding tradition and other traditions, of course. So apart, this is what we have looked at the Janjapuri Kankura Festival, and um, with the help of YEP this year, we are able to develop a good program to rule this year, which I bet is going to be exceptional. So what do we expect during this event? Yeah, I think one of the things you would expect in the festival is you would see 15 different masquerades of the Gambia. Wow. They are all different. You will see 10, type, 10 Kankuran types. Maybe the type of Kankuran you know very commonly is just the Farah Jambu. Jamba no. Jamba yeah. Kankuran. Yeah. No, you haven't seen anything. There is the Mahamu. It's a Kankuran. There is the Wulem Wulem. As the one with Jaffo? The Wulem Wulem is the one with pure Jaffo. Yes. And then they fold the head here. That's the one that turns to become the 
fanboy. Yes, fanboy. Oh, wow, that's the one that turns to be the fanboy. Yeah, one. that's the one fanboy. that turns to be the fanboy. When it is not flying, it is wule wule. Yeah. When it is flying, it's a fanboy. So are we it's expecting to see fanboy? Well, we will be, they will be exposing it anyway, because they will, because they had promised they would put the jab, jab, jabo. Yes. Because come, for jab, jab only, you cannot, it's by option. It's by request from the elders, then it by option, because it's not somebody that you dress. Yeah. You can be a fanboy and I don't know, because fanboy is about the knowledge. Once you have dinner, you become somebody just neutral as anybody else. So all that they need is they fix the, 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 the dress and then, you know, the jaffo and everything how it's supposed to be. They put all these ingredients and all the stuff she needs. They put it at the junction around, you know, marketplace. So with the, you know, sanaga or, you know, the arms they give around, then they leave it there. They, sometimes even before you step out, 10 meters. You see just something like a wire wheel, that wire wheel that comes in. Then it gets inside the jaffo. Then you see, you only hear PAM! Then that then. is the camera. Wow! And then, then, yes, and if then you then. have borrowed your feet, yeah. you got to be <laughs> on that day because the camera is already on the, in there. So it's that kind of spiritual thing that happens. On you. Then it starts moving, you're hearing, Woo, then it goes on and goes on. So, of course, they are ready to showcase some of those this time, and then uh, people will see, you know, the uh, the, the, the fan bondi. and then because they are going to tour fan bondi. they haven't done it for years, for real, they haven't done it for years, and this year they have promised they are going to be ready to put up because the elders are ready to revive this, and as a last bit, push to the young people, the trade and then the skill. They are ready to expose it to the young people so as they are going to, to retiring this year. So the young people will start taking it over from now. Yeah. So finally, um, I don't know if you have any questions for him? Well, Nima obviously knows. <laughs> no, I mean, I have time. You, you has some... The, the animation with which you explained it is very exciting. And I don't know who doesn't want to be there. And I want to be there. Like you, you have been mentioning things that draw my back to my, my mind to my own childhood, the Kwansing Barrows, the King Towns, mm -hmm. and all of these things that we're not seeing happening now. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have a question around that I'm going to ask you later on. But right now, what I want to know is, apart from the tourists, who else do you expect to be there as far as the Gambian community is concerned? Or is it this? elaborate festivals only meant to attract the tourists or is yeah, it okay that's a good for, question yeah. to ask actually no it's not for the tourists only okay. the tourists of course is a little part of entrepreneurship development in terms of sustainability making sure that we are able to derive some things mm -hmm. obviously yes we have um, economically targeted to uh, get the tourists so as to live it to sell it. Yeah. but our particular interest is the we have packages for Gambians, mm -hmm. and we have packages for even those who are from Janjamuri and they are just poor. Okay. So it's one formidable thing which is not only about the festival happening there, mm -hmm. but the most interesting part for the community is there are sons coming home for a weekend. Okay. Right now, the Janjamuri in Kass, yeah. in Germany, in UK, in the US, are converging in the city, in the village at the moment. So that moment of everybody excited, exciting that hey, you know me that come around festival on in today. So it's a big event for them because some haven't seen each other for ages. So this is the only opportunity or time when they will come together, all of them at the same time, mm -hmm. and then we'll find each other in this village. They haven't seen each um, each other for ages and the like. So some. That is one part which the village enjoys very well. That is, they are all sons and children coming back home. And even not those who are in the diaspora only, but some of those who are in Sarakunda. They hardly come to Janjabur. Some do not even come to Janjabur. But this is a period or time when, yes, I can just go back home and family network. You know, meet the family and network with the family. Hey, I'm in daddy, you know, I'm daddy, you see your children, so, so on. I'm even going with my kids and family. You know, because interaction and those mingles yeah. are fantastic. We are better. So, we are going 
people to come for a weekend with their families. We are very much interested in the kids more than even in the adults. Yeah. So, people, so for we, those of us who are not from Janjamburi who may want to go there and we're thinking about where, where am I going to be lodged? No, there is no problem. We, what we did is we have a self-centered program. Okay. We have packaged all the lodges. Mm -hmm. It's under the festival. So we have an information center. Once you reach Danyamburi, you will see where they call the Freedom Tree. The Freedom Tree is right opposite the governor's office and the police station, just by the, um, the ferry terminal, and on the other edge, right at the angle. Okay. So there you will see, of course, arrows that will point you information center, festival information center. You go down there. Once you are at the festival information center, you don't need to be from Danyamburi. Because even if we are in Jenya, we still will go to that festival information center to get. I mean, lodging. Yes, that's what I mean. Okay. So once you are at the information center, they will give you lodging. They will, you will ask. They have their own categories of lodges. They will tell you this lodge is for this, and this is it. This is available. This is available. This is available. Are they so free? They are no, no. Yeah. They are all paid. Yeah. You have different categories. You have, I think, um, uh, there are some that are 600, 800, and even thousand dollars per day, which involves includes everything. You know, all your packets, your maybe your feeding and then your your, your lodging. You know, and um, yeah, basically this I think because transportation you don't need it because they will be using no hot spots. Yeah. You know, around for people to move from one concurrent center, one concurrent avenue to another. You know, so as to make it interesting. If you have not. Ever, if you have never ride a horse, you will have an opportunity, yeah. you know, to be able to ride a horse from one Kankuram point because we have five different Kankuram points where we display each of these Kankuram and they are they are performing there. So they are big games where you can go in there. So you don't need to know somebody in Kank in Tanzania. All that you need to know is know your pocket. That at least I will take, you know. A package of 600, or a package of 800, or a package of 1,000 a day. So that is what you have. Though the tourists, they have their own packages too. Because we are also lodging them in different places. But for Gambians, we have 600 per day, 800 per day, and 1,000 dollars per day. But these are all inclusive. Thank you Do very you much, Sheikh Omar. Okay, you the last time, question. Please. Time elapses. Yeah, yes. yeah, because I, I am interested in the economic <coughs> aspect of it, like safe domestic tourism, so to speak. Yeah. Like, uh, for instance, Gambian living from one end of Gambia to another end of Gambia to also understand them, you know. Yeah. Um, so in that kind of a situation, um, there is that economic effect. But uh, is it... Is it within your, your, your packages or your, your activities to sell this idea, maybe draw a leaflet, a couple of leaflets for Gambians, so that all, every Gambian knows about this festival, know how to get there and what, how much it would cost them, even government institutions? Yeah, of course. I think that's what we did exactly. Like that, festi that flyer you're watching there is not for tourists only. Because what we did for the tourists, mm -hmm. We share, because tourists, you cannot send them a package in a day or two, or even in a week or month. Mm -hmm. Tourists, you send them packages in months. That's why I always finish the national calendar of events or festivals of the Gambia every year. I finish it in June and send it to the branding authority, which is the Gambia Tourism Board. I send it to them for them to send to the tour agents. So when I send it in July to them, they receive it. By end of July, August, they've already sent it to their counterparts. So their counterparts receive it. Latest August, they receive this information that this festival is happening here, this is the day. This festival is happening here, this is the day. So then now they start selling. August, September, October. Three months, they sell the package that this is happening in the Gambia, so this is what we are going for. And like. So you mark your booking, if you are interested in any particular festival, you mark your booking around with that date, then you move on. So this one is actually for the native young people in the Gambia, or people around, because movement of people from one destination to another is tourism. So we are not only promoting that, we are also promoting domestic tourism. That's why we are saying we have a package for young people, or for people that are from the Gambia, 600, 
you know, 800 and 1,000. That is a package for that. But in the tourist, there is a tourist price. There is a tourist price we actually go with, you know, because we give a dedicated some ecotourism camps for them. And you, for us, we have these locals, we have this local lodging, and even this local lodging, we've integrated some people into families. You know, they've renovated their houses, built it nice, the house looks good, and then the toilets are decent, they are fine. So we're integrating some people into houses, into families. They will be living in compounds. There are, in fact, some tourists that are saying, no, no, I don't want to live in the eco to lodge. I want to live with a family. Thank These are you all very much. It's been an insightful word knowing about the National Center for Arts and Culture. And it's indeed important as young people for us to know our history and get acquainted with the National Center for Arts and Culture, especially those in the um, performing arts, music, theater, and the rest, as um, Shea Omar have said. But before I take leave of you, I would like you to share your last words with us. Yeah, I would say, but um, I'm inviting everybody from Tengenbure all the way down to the diaspora that people need to come back home and uh, interact with families. These festivals are such opportunities. We do not only celebrate or sell these products for cultural tourism. Tourism is part of it though, but it's not only the main line. We know that we have our own Gambians who need to even explore their own home. Mm -hmm. Some people don't even know about Janjambure and they don't know a lot around this things in Janjambure. I, well. know, I so know. It's not only really a tourism that. packet, but it's a global packet yeah. for everyone. Thank so you. everyone is invited 14, no, sorry, 18, 19, and 20 yeah. in Janjambure. Thank you very much. And here's well, just remind you. us about the Kankuram Festival that will be taking place from the 18th to the 20th at the Kankuram Festival. In uh, in yeah. Thank you very much, and it's a pleasure having you on board. And next, we'll be having the hot spot of the week, and guess where that is going to be at? Ataya Cafe. In Yatayalan, like Ataya, Achalin in Demkaraba Avenue, and we'll see what we have there. Let's watch. <laughs> My institution. As of now, I can say like acting assistant manager. Well, I'm in, um, like service of plate service, then career def, then they are also like def catering service like um, outsiders then they want call like american embassy should be um like order while i'm meeting getting you call me the federal guy same order be like fish pie meat pie more thin yet again and again and today how for you buddy come coffee attire cappuccino espresso but i am i make a meat um quasa pie fish pie donut and muffin and then i'm going to shower my fried chicken Boga, uh, chicken salad. I'm gonna special attire movie. We have a restaurant in Bari Amunko. Actually, coffee will be amazing. Go on in Indonesia's next cafe, Starbucks, and get use. The go money fee, gambe fee, restaurant, we have the best ginger because you know, then they want to get outside different places because they had the ginger like that for over strong. We go to blend with anything. We just like natural ginger like they that far. So that with the M, then they use infiltrated water. Be you know, you know, that ginger themselves. So it's like other customers then they prefer to up. So I think that's unique in here. I am local drinks to meet. I'm going to ginger dita. Kaba season I'm to the I'm going to refer. I'm library. Students need to read. 
very feel for quiet nga feñu so bu dé study wala nga bëgga kenn mu no stop we have the library and then we also have the other side of like com different customers then they know mona study freely because we have some books here that they could mona use we also have a wi-fi and then the day mona am student discount see a guy piscope it and it we also have discount for them so like because we knew that then they mona consider the students at the end in place because never everybody can afford something so that's why student then they mona am guy discounts bo hamne then they then could mona am like 15 percent of discount that's why they 15 percent so most of the students then they know fee read you know because the place is quiet i'm in disturbance and noisy you know so that's it so then they mona know the face and meeting see send live in it and then we also have something very special for the people out there like poetry cafe every end of like end of month see last friday we get them on a host for the poetry cafe that's very interesting and educative then they on a new field listen to those poems you know it's very good in the student side My favorite leg, I'm wearing omelette. Yeah, sometimes I do it. Go with omelette. No, like that. I have coffee sometimes. Yeah. Coffee. Yeah. Wow. When it is needed. I'm gonna some. I'm gonna night be so tired. I'm gonna job in the morning. I'm gonna so night be tired. Guy, girl, tea, but I'm gonna jir. I enjoy any moment. So night be tired. You offer long. I have never fast said that. Right. Wow. No, like. Yeah. Actually, customer service, the mom and a guy, you know, you know, you know, you to be honest, it is off the hook. Customer service is just wow, perfect. It's really cool. They're really, they really willing and able, then caring as well. So, and then from now, customer services, I mean, services in offers a customer, if now customer system, it's low rank, good services, and from my own perspective. They offering good services to me and my friends. You might figure out your world. They definitely work here. Location is uh, like um, Kerva Avenue around opposite uh, American Embassy, I can say, uh, at Lagos University. Just um, the business number is like 7333344, Ataya Cafe. 7333344, Monica Business Number. Ataya Cafe is the hottest spot in town. Check it. Now I have to take the final words of our... I have to prepare for Fumbundi in Janjambre, so I, I have to leave, obviously. <laughs> so, yeah, um, so it's Mustafa, you can leave for the Fumbundi. I am scared of that thing, but I, I'm very happy that it's, they're reviving such traditions and such yeah. cultures. I just hope, I, I mean, I was going to ask a question uh, about reviving some of these things that have died out. For example, initiation. Initiation is not happening anymore, and this is where they instill the necessary values in our young children, uh, and it's it's very relevant. And I hope that they are going to do something about that too. And it's not just about showcasing the culture, but understanding that it's a living memory. People have to live it. Right. So I hope it's an eventful week. Mm -hmm. 
I mean the coming week. I, I hope to see more coming from Baro and Dago, really. Thank Check you very again. much. Uh, State of mind in our viewers that the Kakuran Festival will be held from the 18th to the 20th um, of January. I will be there and I hope to see you there. On behalf of Kefato and the team, we wish you a beautiful weekend. It's Buying a plot can be easy or maybe a tedious task sometimes, especially when you have so many real estate companies, agents, landowners, and even sometimes so-called landlords all calling to buy their properties. Getting the land is the easiest part, but owning the land with genuine documentation is the problem. We have seen unprecedented court cases of people going to court to settle land issues. If you're looking to buy a plot or a build home with no risk of stress, guys, look for the right real estate company. At EJ Investments, we don't just sell plots, we build communities. Where any plot you buy from us comes with access to water, electricity, internal roads, and other social amenities. We guarantee you genuine contract documentations the moment you pay a deposit and a complete handover of your title deeds as soon as completing payment. We currently operate three projects in strategic locations, selling service plots and built homes in our estate to Jering Seafront, Sanyang Seaview Estate, and our Gunju C4 Coastal Highway Estate. Our plots are affordable from only $90,000. You can own a home at our Gunju C4 Coastal Highway Estate. And from $200,000, you can own a home of your dream at our Sanyang Seaview and Lakeview Estate. Our two Jering Seafront Estate starts from $300,000. Plot sizes ranges from 20 by 20, 20 by 25, and 25 by 25. And we offer an option of 30% deposit and two-year payment plans on our, our estates. A beautiful home with peaceful and happy neighborhood awaits you at our project to join Seafront Estate, Signing Seaview and Lakeview Estate and Green Bush Focus of Highway Estate. Call our office on 4464838 or 302-1056, which is also on WhatsApp. Email us or visit our website on email.